Like, I mean, seriously, like, he really is the cutest dog. Like, look at him. Just look at him. Anyways, today we're gonna to be talking about five things you guys should consider buying, especially if you're filming weddings or getting into it. I feel like I'm gonna have dog hair all over me in this video. If I do, I apologize now. Let's get into it. What's going on y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin. If you're new here on my channel, you'll find tips and tutorials on all things filmmaking, as well as different product reviews and unboxing videos. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what it's about. So if you're into that kind of stuff, definitely consider hitting that red subscribe button and let's go ahead and get started with the video. The first thing I want to talk about that you should consider buying before you buy anything else. I mean, before you upgrade the camera, before you buy new lenses, before you buy a drone, before you do anything else with whatever you're shooting with right now, this should be the next thing you go out and buy. And that is a good wireless lapel system. The reason why I'm saying this is because you want to capture the best audio that you can. They're gonna be the, the sweetest intimate moments like the first looks. And you're gonna wanna capture that audio and capture that dialogue and capture that emotion as clear in the best way that you can. I shoot with the Rode Link system from Rode. It's an amazing, amazing quality microphone. I love it. I can shoot with this outside. I can shoot with this indoors. It has a really good frequency. There's not any interference, at least that I've experienced. And it's pretty much the, the, it's been the only mic that I use that I mic the groom with for every wedding that I've shot. In fact, let's go ahead and play some sample clips. Let's do it. Jamaica, when we first met, I uh, never could have imagined how our lives would have become so intertwined. Jamaica, when we first met, I uh, never could have imagined how our lives would have become so intertwined. Like I said, the Rode Link system is an incredible microphone and I absolutely love it. The range is really, really far as well. You can get pretty good distance between the receiver and the transmitter and that I really love. Aside of that, if you can't really get a wireless setup, I would at least get you a really good onboard microphone. Any of the Rode VideoMic Pros or the Pro Plus, any of those will do. This is the Rode VideoMic Pro. I use this primarily for any of my guest interviews that I may do at the reception, um, just to capture audio whenever I'm closer to the subject and I can be close to them, this is what I use um, primarily. But for the ceremony, for those moments where I, I don't really wanna be in, in the middle of the shot, I use the Rode Link system. So the next thing you should consider buying is some sort of gimbal. You should have something to stabilize your camera because that's gonna be the way that you're able to capture some of the best and most unique shots is with a gimbal. Tracking your subjects, walking with the bride and groom, being able to do pan and, and tilts and things like that. You can get by with it depending on the camera and the setup that you're shooting with, uh, and shooting in high frame rates. But the issue you have with that is that you have to crank your shutter speed and during the reception, almost 90% of the time is gonna be very dark and it's gonna be hard to shoot at anything higher than 60 frames per second, especially in a poorly lit environment, unless you plan to carry in a whole bunch of lighting equipment, which also means you would have to get permission from the venue, which could be a whole entirely different like hassle in its own. So I would honestly just recommend getting you something that can stabilize your camera. Three and four, what about the glass lenses? So moving on, the next thing I would consider buying would be obviously lenses. And there's gonna be two of them that I would highly recommend. One is gonna be a wide to medium focal zoom lens. The other one's gonna be a really tight to tighter zoom lens, I guess. I'm not really sure like what that's called. But I have the Tamron 28 to 75 absolutely absolutely love this lens one thing you're going to want to look for when buying a a good zoom lens is one that has a constant aperture you can get by with a variable aperture but you're going to really really get the most bang for your buck out of a constant aperture zoom lens mainly because like i said the receptions get really dark there's been times where there was little to no light and honestly some brides some couples prefer a specific lighting pattern they will tell you like hey we want the lights off during our reception we just want the dj lights they don't want to have bright lights blasting in their face and they don't want to see you walk around them with you know a led attached to your camera it's just certain things that you want to avoid especially if the couple is already requesting that things be a certain way having a good zoom lens that won't shift on you when you zoom in and you're still allowed to zoom in and get some of those tight shots or kind of maneuver through the crowd a little bit from a distance 
and being able to retain a constant aperture like this one being at f 2.8 is definitely something i would consider buying especially if you're getting into wedding films on the flip side of that this is the sony 70 to 200 f4 depending on your venue and depending on the type of wedding you're shooting like for example i shot a catholic wedding i had to be all the way at the back of the cathedral uh, up near the organ on this on the balcony and that was uh, probably would have been a really difficult wedding to shoot had I not have had a good zoom lens like the 70 to 200. I was able to punch in and literally be like basically in the front row and avoid all the, the heads of everyone in the rows in front of them. So it was perfect. You're gonna want something like this because there are gonna be moments where you're gonna be far back during a ceremony and you don't wanna give someone their wedding film or their ceremony clips and you're you know a mile away from them. It's just not gonna be the best. Not that you can't get by with it. I did it. I made it work for the first few films that I did. You just don't know how far back you're gonna be. That's just the, the raw truth. And lastly, this one is honestly optional, and this is the reason why I, I left this last on the list, and that is getting some sort of drone. I shoot with the Mavic Pro 2, and I just picked this up about a month ago. Um, it's gonna get you some really good, unique shots from the air, and honestly, I'm finding out that more and more of the brides that book me are honestly asking about drone footage. Is it included? It gives you an avenue where you could possibly charge extra for it. You definitely wanna have one in your tool bag. I would say it's still optional. It's not gonna make or break your wedding films. Um, you can still edit a really, really nice, beautiful wedding film without any drone shots in it. In fact, I have been doing it this entire journey up until like a month ago. So the weddings I start posting from the end of August on through the rest of the year will probably incorporate the Mavic 2 in it at some point. But everything before that has just been with my camera and gimbal on the ground. And I just try to, you know, get some really unique shots that way. So the drone, definitely optional, but I feel like a lot of people that are booking for weddings are requesting it and asking for it. If you don't have one, that may put a hinder on how many weddings you can book. Again, I think that's completely optional. If you have a good wedding reel and really, really good showcase like I did for the past year, I was able to still book plenty of weddings without the requirement of having a drone. And that pretty much wraps up this video. Um, if you guys saw last week's video, I was telling you guys, you know, kind of like a status update of where I've been. I actually have a ton of ideas that I want to do with the channel for the wedding filmmakers, um, like going behind the scenes with me on a wedding day, uh, and also just showing you guys some different ways to actually help editing and things like that, and where I find my music, how I select music. There's just a lot that I plan to do. So definitely stay tuned if you're new into wedding films and you wanna learn more. But until the next video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see y'all in the next one. Peace! I feel like I should just spin when I'm done, right? Like, yo, see y'all in the next one. Peace! Oh, I did it twice. Yeah, here we go. Yo, hit that subscribe button. I know y'all new here, but go ahead and hit that red button. Support the channel. I'm eager to show, I'm eager to invite you. Blah.